Hi, sophomore class. My name is Julie Kennedy. I am the Associate Director for Academics of the Air Systems Program. And I want to take just a few minutes to talk with you about the Air Systems Program. But before I launch into that, let me just say, for those of you who are at all interested in studying the environment at Stanford, from my point of view, you simply could not have landed in a better place than Stanford University. There's something like 200 of us here across the faculty and across seven schools who study the environment. And so you are in world, one of the world leading institutions for study of the environment. What's important for you at the sophomore level in thinking about how environment might affect your choice of major is to look at the landscape. What really drives me in thinking about and wanting to engage the environment? What are my options? At the very beginning here, I want to tell you among the really great choices you can make, the only thing you can do wrong is to choose the one that isn't the best fit for you. So I want to encourage you to come talk to me, talk to others about the options that are out there. I invite that. A classic student comes in as a sophomore and says, you know, kind of, I want to save the world, and I'm really interested in energy. I think energy is going to be the end-all, be-all. I can, I can work with that. I can help them to think in the context of studying energy. What kind of thinker am I? What appeals to me? When I'm thinking about energy, am I thinking, I really love chemistry, and I can, I can, I can see, you know, that the next best, best, greatest solution is going to be that better battery. And can I just not wait to, to jump into that and think about that battery and how would I build it and what, what is the nature of a battery? How do they operate? Why are they efficient? In what ways could we make them more efficient with, with, with what mechanisms? That's one type of learner and thinker and that's one scale of system. I can imagine somebody else who immediately is thinking, you know, maybe I'm interested in energy because I'm interested in transportation. I grew up in a, in a city where the transportation, public transportation was awful and I saw all around me mechanisms through which this could be greatly improved. And I really want to think at, at more that regional scale or that urban scale. But I know I also have to think about costs. And I also have to think about who has access to that. What are your access points? What's the most efficient way to move people around? Not just the best energy source, but what are people actually going to use? Why do they make the decisions they make? I might have somebody else who's thinking at a, at a much more large regional scale about, for example, dams and hydro. Maybe they grew up in the Pacific Northwest where they're used to dams, but they're also used to salmon as a, a cultural icon. This is a species that speaks to um, not just the diet, but the heart of many people who grew up in that area and who see this, the wild running salmon, the spawning runs, as being indicative of a healthy environment and a healthy place that they call home. For those students, they may find that they cannot separate for themselves cleanly, that I'm only interested in hydropower and how dams work and where you site them and how you build them. I can't think about that without simultaneously thinking about, but what about, you know, what else are we changing in this environment when we put in this dam? For whom is this going to be a complicating factor? Are there indigenous rights here that need to be considered with respect to those salmon runs? Is this so much of a cultural icon that if we ruin that run, and we can't restore it through fish ladders or some other means that maybe we have to think about whether or not this is the right location for yet another dam. The interdisciplinary thinker as opposed to the deep disciplinary thinker, and both are valid, both are important. We need both kinds of problem solvers. But that interdisciplinary thinker almost can't help himself or herself from looking at a problem in a way that I often describe as being a very three-dimensional viewpoint on a problem. They are always looking for the complexity and they are seeing the fullness and richness that spans across fields. And they are, they are asking fundamentally a different set of questions. Those that would be specific to how and why do you cite a hydro dam are extremely important, but that is one type of thinker and problem solver. If you are that type of thinker and problem solver, I know just where to send you. But if you are the type of student who is always finding yourself with respect to a problem, but saying, but what about cost? Or what about society and culture? But what about that resource? Well, what about, you know, in the long term versus the short term? Maybe an interdisciplinary program is what's right for you. This is a valid approach to problem solving. Mm -hmm. Indeed, it's a critical approach. I, I had two students, one of whom who came to me in his freshman year and said, I've been turned away by a whole bunch of majors. I'm interested in the oceans, I'm interested in science, but I'm also interested in film. And a bunch of people have just sent me away. And 
and I, I couldn't embrace him with arms that were any more open than the arms with which I embraced him. These, for me, were completely sympathetic um, ways of investigating an environment through science, through deep understanding of what are the oceans, what are the problems of the oceans, how do we think about them, and what are those tools? They are mathematical, they are observational, they are large-scale spatial analysis like remote sensing. How do we know what we know about such a big black box environment? Who uses it? They are economic in terms of, of the, the resource that we get from the oceans. They are deeply cultural. Most of us live in fairly close proximity on this planet to the oceans. But for him, there was an artistic component piece that, that was just phenomenally important to him. And again, for me, thinking in an interdisciplinary way about the oceans or any other system, as a scientist, you, you can get a little bit too comfortable having conversations uh, in which your audience is other people who think just like you and who speak the same language you speak. And yet, this is not a language that is shared by that many other people. If you want to affect positive change, what better way than through genres, through media that, that others understand intimately and connect with? And that might have been museum exhibits, that might have been photography, that might have been, in his particular case, film. And in his senior year for his synthesis project, a project that I and several others helped to fund and that he did in collaboration with a, a friend and colleague of his, the two of them traveled to Norway and spent a significant amount of time looking at the issue of whaling in Norway as, as a cultural phenomenon and also looking at it as a, a resource extraction and an ecosystem problem, interviewing people who ranged from whalers to those who sell whale meat as, as a product and encourage its sale to those who are Greenpeace members who would love to see whaling go away in Norway. And it was not from the point of view of trying to predecide what the audience should conclude. It was just a revelation of a cultural perspective on whaling that others might not have had. And indeed, those students produced a one-hour documentary that went on to win the Best Student Film Award at the Blue Water or Blue Ocean Film Festival in Monterey last year. And so enormously successful, enormously influential. But the key thing for that student was when he came and said to, to somebody at Stanford, to a faculty member, Everybody else has told me, these two things, things don't go together, and if you want to do film, why did you come to Stanford? That's nonsense. At Stanford, if you can dream it, you can do it, and there are people who will go there with you. But you need to find that right spot. You need to find where it fits, and people who can share that dream with you and help you to figure out how to realize it. 